so yeah, I just wanted to also you know mention about the art process, like the the process of uh, us uh, brainstorming the moves and then also figuring out which moves make the most sense for the character uh, based on the gameplay. Um, oh, I was really sad we didn't use that sweep, by the way. Which one? The the one in the lower left. Oh oh oh. But yeah yeah, I mean exactly. There's like uh, there's so many moves that are like I think only well. Only one of these moves actually made it in among these. There are, there are only like four or five here, but the point is that like a couple of them are the same kind of basic function where they're like a low kick. Um, actually, because one of them isn't, but... Two of them made it in. Which one? The Upper left is standing hard kick. Oh, right, right. Wait, is it? Yeah, That's it's the, the first part. No, that... It, it was based like on it. a different drawing. But oh, It was really? kind of similar okay. to this one. Yeah, no, I remember which drawing it was. The one where she's like kind of flipping over. Yeah. Vice okay. versa. But, I don't know anything about this game. But anyway, yeah, like uh, there's a brainstorm process where we would like uh, get as many of the artists as possible, like both internally and externally, because I know like a lot of our contractors like to be involved with that creative element of the process. We would like go on like paint chat or like, you know, have people draw on their own time and then like scan in stuff and send it in, like whatever, whatever works best for them. I, I would have like paint chat sessions every like Wednesday or so. Um, it was really fun too, you know, just to kind of just jam on the characters and just like think about them and just get in the right mood. Um, but then, you know, we would have all of these moves and like, you know, we would have a basic direction where we would need to make sure there's at least a few throws, a few jabs, um, you know, fill in everything, but, but as many iterations as possible. And, you know, within the characters, like power set or whatever makes sense with their personality, you know, like Cerebella's more gymnastic and she has the hat. So we find clever ways to use it. Even when she's doing something like a kick, we have her still use the hat in some way. Um, so, you know, we would have that kind of uh, repertoire built up and then... We would hand it off to Mike, and, and uh, then I would go through 400, 500 drawings. Yeah, it, it got more and more with each character. Like yeah. Cerebell was a few. I think by the time we got to Squiggly, it was like eight hundred. Cerebell is like one thirty, and Squiggly had like seven fifty. Yeah. yeah, because um, you know we had a lot of time Squiggly, but also because she was just fun to think of, and we also just kind of started going, you know, give as many options yeah. as possible. And I mean, the really nice part about this was it allowed uh, the move concepts to come from the people that are actually creative. Because if it were me, like, her standing weak punch looks like this, right? Her standing medium punch looks like this, and it's slightly harder, and the hard punch is this. Like, uh, the nice part about this was you get things like uh, parasols, forward weak punch, or back hard kick. I totally did that because she's over there. Um, <laughs> at, or, like, Cerebella's jumping weak punch where she actually gets on the hat arms and, like, kicks up and, like, hangs off of them. Um... It, it ended up being all in character, but all, like, stuff that I would never think of because I'm a boring designer. But after that, we got to use it for gameplay purposes and, like, try to adapt it and see if it worked. But it was really nice because we got move ideas out of this that a person that plays fighting games would never have come up with because I've been conditioned that, like, you know, attacks look like this. Water looks like that. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, nice. It's okay, you hit the microphone stand. Yeah, I just fuck that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, you can go to the next thing. Quick. Um, all right, I ended up using oh, this yeah, one because this I can... This is the iterations. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, this is actually a pretty good representation of it, especially because like the drawing on the left was by one of our, one of our contractors, uh, Jason Robinson, Crybringer. That guy's awesome. Love his stuff. Um, but yeah, that was during one of the paint chat sessions. And then it was funny, too, as you can see that she has a blade halfway through because that was actually a result of function because yeah, like, it the, had no range. It has no range in that current version right there. And you know, for her to do something like step forward and then do it would take like forever as a weak kick. But you know, since she can like have blades hidden in her shoes, it was a pretty easy solution to Yeah. It was a pretty blades oh yeah, there's shoes, blades in a couple of her moves, yeah. Um, it was an easy solution to just add the blade at the just the right length that it was needed. Um, yeah, that one came about because I put in the rough without it. And I was like, okay, this doesn't even hit anywhere. So I drew hitboxes for where it should hit. And then I give it back to the artists, and then they make it look not dumb, which is excellent. So you can see that it goes from concept to like rough animation where the details aren't fully in to cleanup where all the details are in, which would be like the kind of thing that uh, Richard would be uh, in charge of. And also, Nick, Nick raise your arm. Everyone in the audience. There. That, guy's one, that guy did a lot of stuff for Cerebella. He's also one of our cleanup artists. Oh, yeah. That man right there, he is a hero. Seriously. Well, then, he did, he did uh, Lenny, right? Uh, I, think, I think so, yeah. He did like the, the Lenny super, right? Also the explosion. I remember the skull in there. Yeah, that yeah. man is a hero. And then, of course, you know, 
obviously like uh, there were there were a lot of contractors in the other. Richard Richard here was uh, in charge of like you know making sure they all like got together and worked together, and made sure they they stayed on model. So you know if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be as well coordinated because I I'm super disorganized when it comes to like large groups of people, and like Richard knows how to pay attention to the important details, all that saucy stuff that you mentioned in the that I mentioned that were mentioned in the notes. You know Richard made sure that they they got that going. Where's it? Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, Alex, as you can tell from the previous um, design notes and all that stuff, he has a, a bunch of details for all of his uh, cleanup stuff. One of, the, one of the guys from cleanup uh, contractors, he, asked, he actually said that in order to get Alex's designs down, he would draw like the characters like 30 times, like without an, any move, you know, just like just try to get the face down. It's like people, people were really dedicated to this project. So, I mean, we were lucky because everyone who came in for contracting kind of came to us. I mean, we, we did make some call-outs, but, like, they individually wanted to come in and work on the project. And, you know, it was, it was with that kind of dedication that we were able to get as good of a quality as we did. Like, otherwise, I mean, I don't know how anyone, like, could have, like, it's, it's so grueling doing cleanup work. <laughs> but... um Alex, Alex had like you saw all of his stuff before. Like he had like a million different face angles for the characters, a couple different like a, a bunch of different poses for the characters. Um, uh, all of that stuff is very integral to getting the character done right. And um, I usually got a first pass on cleaning up the characters and uh, like doing the idol or, or walks or stuff like that, and gives me a feel for the characters and like that helps me like give the same kind of direction for everyone else that works on uh, the characters uh, subsequently and it was uh, it was really good to be in the office because being able to talk to Alex directly saying hey is this on model is this okay is that okay is very important because like I, I, I can't I mean I can only make so many decisions based off the model sheet like if something is like not there then I have to ask the direct source and it's and people we had like 50 some cleanup contractors so we can't have them all email Alex saying hey is this okay or that okay because you know he's busy with a billion other things so um, I was kind of like that liaison and it's like hey is this all right like just me asking and then you like, yeah sure and then like that kind of applies to the characters um, I remember we did this one big change for like parasol where instead of like we were thinking should, we, should she have a heel like she's already pretty tall though like maybe we should like not have that in and like we and then like we have to send out an email to everyone saying hey you got to shave off the heel a little bit it's too tall and it's like and that that's always kind of like an interesting little facet about mm. changing everything <laughs> but yeah. uh i think everyone just had a lot of fun working on this project especially yeah, contractors there were a lot of iterations of stuff too i i wish i still had the it's a trap oh. Oh, sorry um, also, I'm laughing uncontrollably. I never told you this because whenever you guys would say "stay on model," because that was like oh. I said very often. The only thing I would imagine was like Rich oh. hunched over his desk, and the camera would be from here, and he'd be like drawing, but except it was Luke in the X-wing, and your face would appear <laughs> over here. And then go, Rich, stay on model. Stay on model. <laughs> Sorry. Like I laughed about that quite a bit. Uh, I never <laughs> told you. I guess I guess I can hear what you. Yeah, where that come from. We'll, we'll do that next time for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I remember you were mentioning also like the heel for uh, Valentine too, and I remember um, like yeah. Mariel here is the lead uh, for the animator side because you know there's there's two two halves to uh, you know as you can see there's like three parts of the process and third the the middle part is the animation part where it would be you know you'd be in charge of like the animators for that. I guess if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, so so what the animators would do, um, like Alex would draw a lot of the, um, like kind of like the most important frame for a move, like, you know, this, what we have here, I guess it's over there, um, and what I would do is, uh, like really roughly animate, uh, the entire move, and it was basically split split between John and I, um, we would pretty much animate everything very roughly. And then I would send it out to one of our animators who would finish it up and add all the details. Um, and then from After there... That was kind, right? Oh, uh, well, yeah, I guess so. Okay, well, so what, what it really was was that uh, John and I would do the rough animation. We would send it to Mike, who would implement it in the game. 
Um, and so in a very rough, sketchy form, it was actually playable. Uh, it just didn't look very good. You've all seen squigglies, or you will. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah it's, it's basically, if you've seen squiggly, that's what it looks like in-game. Um, and then we would get the appropriate timing back, and then we would be able to send that to our contract animators who would finish it up and send it back, and then we would send it to Rich. Do you want to tell them about the before, how we actually had like, spent like, the first two characters yeah. really delayed? Um, like, so it was... Yeah, it was it was a learning process to figure out how was the best way to approach animating everything. Um, and so we started working at Reverge with uh, Sarabella, basically, and we kind of had no idea what we were doing. Um, that carried through the end of the project. I got a little better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so what we were doing is that we were drawing keyframes and then having our uh, animators kind of fill them in however they felt was best. But then that resulted in me fixing everything and most of my time was spent uh, redrawing things, retiming things and, and just not producing new work. Making um, a lot of this space. I guess, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's neat. laughs> Every time um, I would look up. Yeah. Pretty anyway, much. sorry. <laughs> it's okay. This is why they don't um, invite me to these. Um, so, so we kind of figured it out that it was actually best for uh, John and I to animate everything in-house, even though it was a little bit more time um, at the start getting everything in. Uh, it resulted in uh, a lot less fixes when working with contractors. Um, so we, I think like when we did Sarabella, she took like four or five months. Probably, yeah. Yeah, she, she took a long time. She took four or five months to animate. Um, and by the end of production, when we did uh, Valentine, I think we did her in like six weeks. It was, was getting that? really tight. By yeah, the well, we were, we were also doing like 70, 80 hour a week, so it was kind of ridiculous. Um, also, just working in char on characters in general, we would have milestones for uh, every character. So it would be like three or four weeks of kind of working on a normal schedule, and then a couple more weeks of like, crunch like crazy. Um, Never give up your IP. <laughs> well, I don't think that has to do with it. We just had deadlines no matter what. Yeah, but more of them later. Okay, well, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so, so every few months toward the end of every character we were crunching like crazy and it sucked. Um, but yeah, we got better at it. Yeah. That's all. That's yeah. all I got. <laughs> the process has become a lot more streamlined since then. Yeah. 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 For those There's of a process for those of you who wonder how much work goes into making a character for a fighting game, a lot more than you think. Uh, how many how many contractors did we actually have? Uh, I think on our credits list we have like ninety eight animators and cleanup artists. Wow, and it still took like three months. Yeah. Per character. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of work. I was surprised. I would say most of the time, uh, most of the extra time towards the end was fixing the not so good contractor stuff. I mean, there were there were, everyone was good because we all accepted them, but some of them weren't as good as the others. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's just it's just the fact of life when you get people, a lot of people working on your stuff. We want them to. I mean, we, we test them. And it's not their fault. It's on us. It's our problem for not directing them. Long. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> I applaud that. I was going to <laughs> You said it, not me. <laughs> uh, 